Well, we developed a technique a few years ago, more or less by accident, and that's, that's one of the exciting things about science, that the really exciting science is often something you stumble, up, stumble on by, by accident, and this was sort of an accidental discovery. I didn't know in my lab much about the history of pulling fibers. Had I known about the history, I would have discovered that people in the 60s tried to pull very thin fibers and failed. But I didn't know that. It had not been written up. And as a result, I said one day to one of my co-workers, let's try to pull much thinner fibers than have been done before and see what happens on that scale. We found some of the same problems that other people had found, but we found a way around it too. And we managed to pull fibers as thin as 20 nanometers, which is about a factor 1,000 thinner than a hair. So these are really small. They're smaller than the wavelengths of the light. I want to give you a feel for how that compares to microelectronics. Our life now is controlled by microelectronics. You probably are wearing a watch or a digital camera, or, or you might have a cellular phone on your belt or in your purse. All of these devices use electronic <clears throat> chips that you know, are little micro-scale devices that manipulate electric current rather than light. This is one such chip where we've removed the cover, and if you were to look inside, you'd see a little piece of silicon, which is a material that's derived from glass, on which metal leads have been evaporated that do all the magic of microelectronics that makes our lives so wonderful these days, or at least technology so wonderful these days. We've actually sprinkled a few of the nanowires, of the glass nanowires that we're pulling in that flame above there on top of it. Can't see them yet. I have to zoom in on the microscope. So just to give you an idea, the, the width of that little chip is about a millimeter, which is, you know, one twentieth of an inch. It's, you know, pinhead, roughly. Now you can start to see some nanowires. There's one that goes there from the left to the right. We're going to zoom in, and in fact, I have to go to another type of microscope because optics is not good enough to resolve it. I have to go to an electron microscope in order to see that nanowire. And you can see something interesting right away, namely that the electronic lead, this is the wire, one of the wires on the chip that transports current or electric signal from one point to another. Notice it's bubbly and uneven on that scale. Electric current doesn't mind these bumps. Light is very fussy. Something has to be extremely smooth in order for light not to scatter uh, off. So let's zoom in to see actually how thick that nanowire is. Here it is. It's actually 300 nanometer, not 20 nanometer, but this was 300 nanometer thick. So it's a lot smaller than current uh, microelectronics. On the right, a picture of a nanowire, actually a nanowire tied in a knot, which would be a nano knot, I guess, on top of a human hair. That's what a, one of your hairs look like if you look at it really close up. But the really exciting thing is that we can take two of these nanowires close together. At the top, you see that they're, they're, they're touching each other. And when you send down light, the light hops over onto the other nanowire. That's pretty exciting, right? Because if you take two electrical wires and you touch them, you have an electrical contact, and electricity goes from one wire to the other. Here we've done the same thing with light. It's like we have a wire for light where we can just touch them and have the light make optical contact between the two nanowires. So they guide light, but they guide light very differently. As I said before, the diameter of these nanowires is smaller than the wavelengths of the light, and light doesn't like to be confined that tightly. So instead of being like a hose for light, like an ordinary fiber is, they're more like a rail for light. The wire, the light hugs the wire and just, you know, follows it around to go from one point in space to uh, the other. And it turns out there are many new interesting phenomena about light that we can study that way. We can also bend the light very tightly. That bend there is about 1 20th the diameter of a hair. Here's a little device that we made, and it's less wide than the width of a hair, that takes light in on the top left and then splits it into two. So it's like a little splitter for light, the smallest splitter ever made. That was the first device that we, uh, we built. I want to end by, by revisiting a question, why is smaller better? Well, one is it's faster because the signal has to travel less far. You know, each time the signal has to go from one switch or device or, or, or manipulation or process to the next, it has to travel, so it takes time. So the smaller you make it, the faster the device will be. 
The other advantage is less resources. You need far fewer materials. You can integrate it very densely, accomplish more with less space. And in addition, you can use a lot of new phenomena that occur at the nanoscale that do not occur at the macro scale and use those phenomena to actually make uh, devices. So I want to end again with that picture that I started in the beginning, which is just that flame. And just as you can take chewing gum and just, you know, pull it and it, it ends up being a, a, a thin wire, same thing happens with glass. When you put it in a, in a flame, it gets soft, much like chewing gum, and you pull it and you can pull these extremely thin wires. It's extremely simple. I mean, the, the, the cost of building that is a few tens of dollars. It's not, not much... Uh, not much work. So what I want to leave you with is even though the word nanotechnology may sound complex, it can be very simple. And with the simplicity, you, you end up being able to design devices that can do completely new things at a completely new scale. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those.